All right, Packet people, you know the buzz, AI this, AI that, and there's a lot of conversation out there about how well it's doing when it comes to packet analysis. Some people absolutely hate it and think it is the devil. Other people are embracing it to help with their packet analysis workflow. So in this video, we're actually gonna take a packet capture, throw it at a couple of public models, and see how good it really is. Now this is gonna be a live analysis. I have not sent this packet trace to these models yet, and I'm just gonna use some basic ones that you can access as well. Let's just use ChatGPT and Gemini and see how well they do. But before we get into the AI analysis, let's first just take a look at the PCAP and walk through it and see what the real problem is. All right, so it's very simple PCAP, just a client talking to a server, doing a three-way handshake. We can see that the get request is here, and then down in packet number 11, here is the get response. But the key about this is look how long it's taking. Here we can see the request goes to the server. The server gets this packet, responds 106 milliseconds later, says thumbs up, I got that data. If we wanna do sequence analysis, we can come down here and take a look at our sequence numbers, 1496. If I compare that to the sequence numbers above with the actual packets in flight on the way to the server, I can see that this, this ACK is successfully ACKing the two packets above. Wireshark also gives me a visual indicator there. Just to the left of packet five, you can see there's a little check mark, meaning packet six is ACKing the data in packet five. It's been successfully received. But then notice what happens. I've got two different keep alives. So 45 full seconds later, the client then checks in with the server saying, hey, are we, we're keeping this alive, right? Server comes back 100 milliseconds later. Yep, keep alive, good. We are keeping the TCP connection alive. That application upstairs has not yet begun to respond. Again, 45 seconds later, client does the same thing. This is a TCP keep alive. Server comes back, yep, we're good. Then 18 seconds after that second keep alive, uh, the uh, application actually begins to respond. This is where we see data coming from that application server. Something I like with uh, Wireshark as well, you can see packet number 11. This is the response for the request that initially went out in packet four. See our two arrows here? Four is going out, there's our request, 11 coming back. And we can see if we come down to the bottom, there's some nifty little timers in our stuff, if you expand HTTP, you can go down here, time since request was 108 full seconds. This server is dog slow. But what catches a lot of people up is the black and red letters, those packets in the middle that look really ugly. But really, those are just a TCP indication of being kept alive. TCP connection is being kept alive between the two endpoints. Okay, so there's a high level walkthrough of what's going on in this packet trace. So now let's see what ChatGPT and Gemini can do with it. Now ChatGPT and Gemini, before I can actually send this packet capture to it, I first have to convert this packet capture to a different format. Because at the moment, at the time of this recording, uh, they don't ingest packet capture natively. So what I gotta do is come up here to file, I'm gonna say export packet dissections as JSON. Let's just do that. And I'm going to say sample, keep it nice and high level and say okay. And that now just exported from Wireshark from packets to a JSON file. Now one other note before you do this, make sure you're very careful about what you share with public LLMs like I'm about to do. Make sure that you're doing it with either sanitized PCAPs or PCAPs that don't have your internal network data. You will be throwing whatever it is in that packet trace which involves a lot of detailed information out there for the world to see. So be very careful. If you want help on how to sanitize your packet captures, you can go ahead and hit this video up here and I walk you through how you can uh, strip payloads, how you can change IP addresses and keep your data safe. All right, getting back into it, I'm gonna take my JSON file and I'm gonna start with ChatGPT, just pop this out there and I'm gonna just ask it, so why was this so slow? All right, so here's the chat GPT analysis. So it does say, okay, from long idle gaps in the TCP session. Okay, no, that's not true. Slowness does not come from those idle gaps. Those are just a symptom, but let's keep going. All right, handshake and request. Uh, so it does see the get, and it looks at our initial round trip times from that initial handshake and request. And then it sees a keep alive packet. So it does see those two 45 second keep alives. All right, that's a TCP probe from the client because the server hasn't responded yet. That is true, okay. Repeated long gaps, it shows another one. All right, and then why so slow? The slowness isn't due to the handshake or network round trip time. Those are fine, agreed. The problem is due, 
the server application, it took tens of seconds before responding, forcing the client to send TCP keep alive. That's actually true. This would be perceived by the user as a web request hanging or being very slow. All right. In short, the delay is caused by the server side taking greater than 45 seconds between responses, not the network transmission itself. Okay, question. How long did it take for the server to respond in total? Let's just guide it a little bit. Okay, so ChatGPT is still not quite getting it here. So it does say that it's long. All right, so it tells us where our packet four is. Response doesn't get until packet 11, which is true. But how long does it take? Nothing meaningful happens. Response didn't come for at least 90 seconds after the request. That's true, but it was 108 seconds, chat. So what's the deal? So anyway, let's go ahead and flip on our little deep research here. Let's just see if we can, that just helps us out in any kind of way. So what was the application response time? Okay, it's doing its thing. Notice at the bottom, I think it's kind of funny. ChatGPT can make mistakes. Well, you already have, but it's uh, trying. All right, well, ChatGPT is doing a bit of deep research. Let's just go ahead and cut over here to Gemini. Let's just see, does Gemini do an, any better job? And in this capture file, the client was experiencing slowness with an application. What was the problem? Be appropriate. There we go. All right, so let's see what it says. I'm just going to jump over to reasoning and math mode just to uh, jump here. I know it's not quite apples to apples. It's okay. Don't jump on me for that. It's just to test people. All right, I'm going to drop this in and I'm going to say, okay, um, in this packet capture, the client was experiencing, experiencing a slow application. What was the problem? All right, so let's see what it comes up with. So based on this capture, the problem is severe server-side processing delay. Ooh, it jumped right on it, okay. Application is slow because this server is taking an exceptionally long time to respond to the client's request. Bam, go Gemini. All right, initial network latency is normal. That is true. Extreme server response time. So it wasn't distracted by those keep alives. And check that out. Yes, so the initial... RTT is 104 milliseconds, but it's taking over 108 seconds to hear back from that server. Wow, and also there are some, some subsequent requests that also took long. TCP Keep Alive's confirmed the stall. So during that delay, the client sends TCP Keep Alive packets. Uh, yep, that's actually true. Server correctly responds, making sure that the connection is open, but the application on the server side is not responding yet. So in conclusion, the network itself is not the bottleneck. That is true. Root cause slow application is the server. Needs to be investigated for performance issues such as high CPU usage, slow database queries, or application level bugs. Okay, Gemini. That's incredible. It did take a look at it and it wasn't distracted by the keep alives. It focused on the absolute response time of that application, which was spot on true. So this is a pretty good analysis from Gemini. Go ahead, Gemini. Let's go over to ChatGPT. So here we can see, all right, so I did that deeper research with ChatGPT and it was able to come up with an application response time report. Here we can see the correct application response time here and even some further responses that came through a little bit later. So what do we learn? All right, so I sent those out as a JSON file to those different LLMs. Uh, I included the link in the description down below as far as uh, to the packet capture, but I've already used these on these LLMs, so you can't do the same. It's gonna have already learned a bit about them. Uh, it won't be a, a new PCAP that it's never seen before. Uh, so what do we learn? Well, AI is actually getting pretty good, guys, but we gotta take it with a grain of salt. Always, always, always. Take an extra look at those packet captures because initially with ChatGPT, it was it was off. It was wrong. Um, it didn't understand what those keep alive were, and it was it was focusing too hard on those. But doing some deeper research, it did find that delay, and it was able to pinpoint it. Gemini, man, without a whole lot of prompting, it got it. So uh, this is just a simple example. Of course, there's a 
whole ton of different variables that go into this. Um, I find usually when it comes to AI, and I'm working that into my work workflow progressively as we go forward, it's fantastic for helping me to do research on IP addresses or different things that I see within a packet capture that I'm just doing research on. It's great to help me with that. And also too, if I do sanitize a PCAP and I remove the IPs and remove payloads and I really make sure to double check what's in that thing. Uh, and also it's best to do this on a local model, but it does help to find things that I might have missed. Uh, maybe there's a certain signature that it is looking for, a malware signature or other type of attack pattern. It, it might spot it where it was just out of my field of focus uh, when I'm looking at a packet capture. So a few different ways that it's coming on and able to help me do some of my analysis. So right there, packet people, we were able to take a packet capture, throw it at these models, uh, some variances here with the different models we choose to use, but I just wanted to demonstrate this for you. And wow, Gemini, good job. It got it. All right. Take care, everybody. See you again.